Bitcoin routing is a very popular routing technology uh, which is on the merge. But before we get into segment routing, I'd like to talk a bit about IP networks overall and how it all started. Now, traditional IP networks is a bunch of routers that are all interconnected and they exchange routing information, they exchange adjacencies, they announce and they learn how the network looks like. And this is done through a routing protocol, what we typically call IGP. And once the routing protocol has done its thing and all the routers are being converged, they've built their routing tables, they have priorities on the routes. So when a packet comes in, the router will push it out uh, across a specific interface, which for that router is the most optimum path uh, through the network. And the most optimum par path is not always the path we want to send traffic across. Um, somehow, service providers want to have the ability to drive traffic through a network, to do traffic engineering. Well, in a normal IP network, you cannot do this. You cannot drive traffic over very specific paths unless you would do very simple policy-based routing uh, efforts, but that's not scalable, that's not supportable in a large-scale deployment. Even more so, um, when, um, but even more so, uh, traditional IP networks have another problem whereby certain links will be overutilized because it's the best path and other links won't be used at all and they just sit there idling along and doing absolutely nothing. So that's a bit the problem with standard IP networks. There is no traffic engineering. You cannot drive traffic through the places in the network you want to drive it to. And then all traffic tends to be stuck on the same links because those are the best links according to those routing protocols. Right. So then uh, people invented multi-protocol label switching with traffic engineering. And multi-protocol label switching with traffic engineering still relies on an IGP protocol to build the routing tables. But then the routing tables will get an extra injection of a label. And a label is just a number. And a label has been created um, and distributed and the, the binding with the routing table is done through what we call the label distribution protocol. <clears throat> now, when a packet arrives at the edge of an MPLS network, that router is called the label edge router. And the label edge router will then inject a label into the packet. And then the packet will be forwarded on an outgoing interface towards another router downstream in the network. At the downstream router in the network, uh, that router will receive the packet that comes in, it will look at the incoming label and then swap the label out and switch the packet to the outgoing interface and inject a new label. label. This is what we call label swapping. Very fast, very quick. So this is a very good method for passing traffic along the network. All the intermediate routers are commonly referred to as the label switching routers. And that's all what they do, swapping labels. At the ingress of a uh, MPLS network, you find your label switching router, uh, sorry, excuse me, you find the label edge router, and the label edge router uh, is, pushing a pack, uh, is pushing a label into the packet, and when the packet is leaving the MPLS network, the label edge router uh, will then actually pop the label and remove the label so that there is no longer a label in the IP packet so the end device gets a proper IP packet. So this is a bit how that works. Now, as a service provider, you can now actually engineer the network. You can traffic engineer it. You can decide through policy which path a specific packet has to take from the input to the output. And depending on the type of the packet, depending on the type of traffic, you as a service provider want to steer it through certain areas of your network. You may not want to go to certain countries or you exactly may want to go to certain countries. So with traffic engineering, you can do this. And it's a policy. And the policy is applied on the routers and the policy creates what we call label switching paths, LSPs, that will follow a specific route through the network, a path. And of course, all the forwarding is happening with label switching. Now, 
Uh, the issue now is, of course, that once you build the label switching parts across your network for certain types of packages, and which packages that will follow that path, that could be anything. Uh, the trigger for that could be the destination IP address, it could be the DSCP, it could be the port number, or a combination of any of them. Now, before you can actually create a label switching path through the network, there has to be a confirmation from the network that the path is actually available, that there is bandwidth available for that very specific purpose. And that's why you need another protocol, which we call RSVP. It's a reservation protocol for traffic engineering. Now, the fact that you need now an IGP for your normal routing tables, the fact that you need label distribution protocol to bind the labels to the routing tables and to distribute the labels, and that you need RSVP to build your LSPs, and that you have all your LSPs, you have such a complex system, you have so many tunnels, thousands and thousands and thousands of tunnels in your network that it's very hard to retain scalability and uh, simplicity in your network, which makes troubleshooting extremely, extremely difficult. Now, in smaller networks, that is not an issue, but in large service provider networks, this really becomes an issue, especially with the emerging of the internet. And think about the IoT coming up very soon. Uh, it's really becoming an issue. That's why a new method has been sought, and it's called segment routing. Now, segment routing by itself is not that much different than MPLS, and yet it is. Uh, what has happened with segment routing is that the state is now in the packet and it's no longer in the network, meaning that we can now run segment routing over an MPLS network and we retain the MPLS forwarding plane, but not the control plane. The RSVP and the LDP are being removed and instead we have an extension in the IGP routing protocols. ISIS has now an SR extension and OSPF has an XR SAR extension allowing these segments to be distributed throughout the network and to create the binding with your routing tables. Now, I just dropped the word segment and a segment is nothing more than an ordered list of instructions for a device, a router along the network to act upon, to forward the packet according to that instruction. There's nothing more, nothing less to it. And there's two types of segments. There is the nodal segment, which is globally unique and assigned to a router. A router has a unique segment number, and it's just a number. And this is what we call the nodal segment. Uh, and it's just a number, it's just like it would be a label. And then we have the adjacency segments. And adjacency segments uh, are local significant and are only meaningful through that one specific router that has a multiple interfaces and every interface could be getting an adjacency a number. Now, now that we have global segments and we have adjacency segments, we can place all these segments in an ordered list. When the packet comes into the first segment router, we can inject the ordered list into the packet based on a policy, based on how we want this packet to flow through the network and that ordered list with all the segments will then force the packet along a very specific path through the network. Very simple. Very similar to MPLS DE and now we have created segment routing that does traffic engineering. Now the beauty on this one is that the ordered list of segments could be anything and you can make even a combination of part of the network which is the IGP routed and then from a certain point on then you will define the path. And even more interesting is that the path is not supposed to be so static. It can change over time. But then we need to do a few more things. Then we need to start talking about PAD computation engines and PAD computation clients. Now the, imagine that the router is able to talk to a common device, a centralized device, and inform this device about its bandwidth, about its state, all these different things. So then this uh, centralized controller could then actually um, compute all the paths through the network 
uh, all the segment lists actually uh, that are best fit for at any given specific moment in time. So when the first packet would arrive at a segment router at the edge of the network, the segment router would not know normally what to do with it. It would just look at the destination IP address. It would probably be looking for a segment list, but there's nothing in it. So then it would say, bad computation engine, give me the segment list for this specific packet. And then the bad computation engine will then look up on its policies for that specific packet to what it matches, either DSCP, destination or port number. And then it would flush down the segment list for that specific packet. Then the router will receive that segment list. It will inject it into the packet and it will forward the packet to the first entry in the segment list, basically. Um, and it will keep that in cache until the next packet comes along, so it doesn't have to go back all the time to the PCE. And all the routers along in the middle of the network, they, they all do the same thing, basically. Now, when network conditions are changing, then the PCE is aware of that because it's been flagged by all the PCCs. And as a consequence, it can alter on the fly, actually, the segment list at the edge routers. And this is really beautiful because now we have a dynamic adjustment of the parts and the volumes and the bandwidth. Now this is really, really neat. So this is really SDN. Uh, so segment routing leverages your MPLS network, but it also creates an SDN environment for you. And you could call the PC a SDN controller if you want to, and that's what I would call it. Uh, but that's not the end of the story. But now imagine that you would have an application and the application wants to route a packet through the network. Well, if the application was able to go to an orchestration tool and ask, hey, I need to route this packet through the network. Um, and then the orchestration tool would say, okay, uh, based on your SLA, um, I can give you this path. And then the orchestration tool would send the segment list to the application and the application would then inject that segment list into the IP packet and then it would just push it out to the segment routers and they should be okay. I mean, they will understand it because now we close the loop and they can forward the packets very quickly. And now we have almost a fully automated system, which we call application-based routing. So really, there's a lot of future for segment routing. There's many more things that we can talk about. And maybe I should mention one last thing is that segment routing uh, is very good and it has fast reroute uh, working in any kind of topology. So that's another big advantage. And we have reduced the complexity because we got rid of RSVP and LDP. And now the state is in the packet, as they say, and no longer in the network. So thank you for watching. Oh, and then before I forget, there was another model for segment routing, which we call segment routing IPv6. And this is purely for IPv6. This is still partially under development, which does not mean that you cannot run MPLS segment routing only with v4. Obviously not. You can run this in a full v6 network. But the segment routing IPv6 is really intended for Internet of Things. So thank you for viewing my video and I hope I was able to explain you certain things on segment routing.